I'm too small. Ah, that's better. Once upon a time, there was a rather strange king who collected trees. Yeah. From all over the world. He loved his trees, but he loved one tree more than all the others, because it was a chocolate tree. He really loved his chocolate tree. He used to rush out into the garden first thing in the morning and stand next to it and say, oh, I love you, chocolate tree. I really love you. And he loved it so much that he proclaimed a new law. If anyone picks a single chocolate of this beautiful chocolate tree, then by magic they will instantly disappear a hundred miles down under the ground. However, the king also had three daughters who really loved chocolates. Oh, we really love chocolates, don't we, girls? Yes, we do. I mean, it's terrible our rotten old dad won't let us have any chocks off the chocolate tree. I mean, for heaven's sake, what is the point of having a chocolate tree if you can't just go out and scoff the lot? And after six mouth-watering months of looking out of the window of the palace and going, Oh, God, it's just not fair. I mean, look at the size of those chocks. The youngest daughter couldn't stand it anymore and said, Look, girls. Our dad loves us far too much to magic us a hundred miles under the ground. Let's rush into the garden and stuff ourselves stupid with great big yummy old chocks. Nice idea, shouted the other two. And all three princesses scooted into the garden with their mouths wide open and their fingers ready to pick. But no sooner had they plucked one each than, oh dear, oh blimey, all three princesses sank deep down into the earth a hundred miles. At midday, the king called his daughters to lunch, but they were nowhere to be found. No one had seen them, and the last thing the king suspected was that his magic spell had got his own daughters. He thought they were good girls who would never go against his wishes, which they were, really. They were just crazy about chocolates. And as the king walked sadly in his garden, worrying about his daughters, he noticed his chocolate tree had completely withered away, and there was nothing left but a pile of empty wrappers. Oh no! My beautiful, beloved chalky tree! Howled the king! Oh! And he summoned his royal magician. Magician, why won't the chocolate tree grow anymore? Uh, well, said the magician, like, does anyone know what day it is, man? <laughs> Concentrate, said the king. What's the matter with my tree? Oh, wow! Oh, wow! This is like a bad omen, man. Like, your chocolate tree is not going to grow, like, until your daughters come back, man. I mean, king. In that case, proclaimed the king, anyone who finds my daughters can have a big prize and marry one of them. And somebody, please clean up these chocolate wrappers. I don't want to be reminded of my poor lost tree. <laughs> So, all the young men in the kingdom who weren't busy went searching for the king's daughters because of their great beauty and kind hearts. And three of the king's gardeners decided to search for the girls as well. Well, they had nothing better to do since the chocolate tree was dead. And they searched, searched, searched for ages until they were exhausted and lay down to rest in an enchanted wood and decided to sleep there for the night. The two eldest found themselves some comfortable moss to lie on, and as there was no moss left for the youngest, they made him sleep on a pile of thistles, because they didn't like him much, and made fun of him behind his back, and called him stupid. They all three went to sleep. But at the stroke of midnight, the eldest felt someone shaking him and woke up and saw a little gnome beside him. Good midnight, it said. Get lost, said the eldest. Plop! <coughs> oh! <coughs> said the elf and went to the second. Eh, good five past midnight, it said. 
Shows off, said the second. Bosh! <coughs> mid nose, said the gnome, and went to the youngest. Good ten past midnight, it said. <coughs> Hello, said Stupid. Can I help you? Oh. <laughs> well, at least you're a nice and polite young man. And as a reward, I shall tell you where the king's three daughters can be found. And so he did. Hey, what could you with me? Really? Yeah, well, that's great. Come here. Thanks. And in the morning, Stupid led his two friends to a deep well. Come on, come on, look. A well that had no water in it. Guess what's down there? He asked them. I don't know, uh, slime or uh, rats? Is it? No, no, no. The king's daughters. Let's go. Uh, 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 uh. But the other two just laughed. Uh, 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 uh. We're not going down there. It's disgusting. <laughs> hey, uh. I tell you what, stupid. You go down, and uh, and we'll stay up here in the nice sunshine to 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 pull you up again when you're finished. I mean, it's a it's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> hey, thanks, guys," said stupid, and down he went into the dark, slimy well, which was horrid and full of poisonous spiders <laughs> and giant rats <laughs> and, 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 and creepy, crawly things which were so disgusting, I don't even know what they were called. <laughs> Stupid bravely crept along a dark passage <laughs> until he came to a door. Oh, ah, a door. He listened at the door and he heard a dragon snoring. You can always tell if it's a dragon by the snore. He opened the door slowly. And there were the king's daughters, picking the fleas and lice out of the heads of a gigantic dragon with nine heads. That's what they've been forced to do all this time. Yuck! Yeah. <laughs> Quickly, stupid, chopped off the heads. Chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. Uh, chop, chop. I say, what's going on? Chop. He nearly forgot the ninth one, but he got it just in time. And the dragon was dead. The king's daughters sprang up and threw their arms around stupid and kissed him. First the eldest kissed him. Then the middle one kissed him. And then the youngest one kissed him. The youngest was the most beautiful of all the daughters, and Stupid fell in love with her immediately. So he kissed her. Mwah! Then all three kissed him at once. Mwah! Then one by one. Mwah! 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 Then all at once again. Mwah! Mwah! Kissing without stopping. That's enough kissing, said Stupid. Stop that. Who was getting all, all wet and slobbered on. Look, let's go home. <laughs> Well, maybe just one more kiss from you, little youngest one. <laughs> and one by one, he placed the daughters in the bucket and had them pulled up out of the well. And because he wanted to keep a dragon's head as a souvenir, he put that in the bucket next, clonk, and sent it up. Coming up, he called. And his nasty, lazy friends pulled the bucket up until it was nearly at the top. And then thinking it was stupid in the bucket, they cut the rope and it went crashing to the bottom of the well. Yeah, and the horrible gardeners laughed and danced and waved their trousers in the air because they thought that stupid was dead. The two bad gardeners ran away with the king's daughters and said, Listen, you three, we'll throw you back down the well if you don't tell your father it was us who rescued you and not stupid. <gasps> Oh, heavens, what ghastly men, cried the princesses. But we'll have to do what they say. Oh, how frightful. <laughs> and meanwhile, Stupid was wandering about underground, a bit stupidly. Oh, 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 thinking he was never going to get out, when he walked into a wall. Oh, oh, and noticed a flute hanging there. So he took it down and sadly played a note. And guess what? A little gnome appeared. Hello! He played a second note. And another gnome appeared. Hello! And again, and again, every time he played a note, a gnome appeared. Hello! 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 Until there was a whole room full of gnomes who said, Well, what is your wish, oh huge one? Well, I wish I was with the king's youngest daughter. Righty ho, boss! said the gnomes. And they each grabbed one of Stupid's hairs, flapped the little wings on their feet, and flew him up to the golden daylight, straight to the palace.
and plopped him down, plonk, on top of the king. Oh, great hairy snail sandwiches, said the king. What is going on? Oh, uh, sorry, your majesty, said stupid, and bent his crown back into shape. There you are. And told him all about the wicked gardeners and the rescue of his daughters. So that, when the bad gardeners rushed in five minutes later, shouting, Look, it's us! We've rescued your daughters, your majesty! Just the two of us, and not stupid at all! So we're uh, gifts first one princess each, and we'll split the other one in half, like. So, oh, oh, look, it's stupid! How did he get in here? He got in here because the gnomes helped him. Because the gnomes only help good people, of which you are not too. And let it be known that I banish you to wicked gardeners to live under the ground with the dragons forever and ever. Ha ha! Hello, girls. And off went the gardeners and good riddance too. The king kissed the girls, the girls kissed the king and... Anyway, suddenly... Oh, wow! Well, look! The chocolate tree's like got its act together, man, said the magician. And the king's joy was complete. Right, now if anyone eats a... S uh, uh, oh, all right. Everyone can eat the chocolates whenever they like. And so they did. But the tree was always full. Stupid was married to the king's youngest daughter. And the middle daughter was very happy. Because now she was free to go off and be an explorer with the eldest. And they rode away on elephants towards the place where the sun sinks down. They've locked the top.